Daniel Aman, presidente de General Motors Company, de visita en México para la inauguración de su planta en Toluca, Estado de México. Entrevista exclusiva con Mundo Ejecutivo. For the company overall, um, we feel like we're in good shape uh, all around the world. Uh, business is strong in, in many of our major markets. In North America, business is good. In China, business is good. Uh, the environment is a little more challenging in South America uh, and in some of, the, uh, some of the other markets in Asia, for example. But overall, the company is in strong shape and uh, business is, uh, is going well. Mexico, within our North America business, is a very important part uh, of our operation. We have made very significant investments here over a very long period of time. We announced just last December another $5 billion of investment uh, coming up here uh, over the next few years, which I think underscores how important this market is as a major production hub for us, but also an important local market from a sales perspective. So we're very committed to our business here. Uh, I feel like we have a huge amount of opportunity in front of us. Uh, like I said, the company's in good shape today, but I still think we have a lot of potential uh, opportunities that we haven't yet really capitalized on. So I see, I'm very optimistic about the future and uh, our ability to grow the business, both in, in size and in profitability. Most of the investment is focused on our production operations here, and it will involve uh, some expansion of ex our existing operations, but also uh, getting ready for a new generations of vehicles that we'll be bringing to market. So Mexico means really um, a couple different things for us. First of all, it's an important market for us to sell vehicles. We have a sizable uh, operation here. Obviously, we have a good market share. We have a good dealer network. Uh, we have strong brands, and we see an opportunity to, to grow our business at an even faster rate than the market might grow. Uh, and we've, we feel quite good about the economy here and the medium term potential for the economy to grow and for our business to grow with that. So we see good opportunity for us to, to sell more cars, to have more customers in Mexico. In addition, obviously this is a very important production hub for us to supply other markets, particularly in the Americas, obviously the US uh, and Canada, but we also see, op also see opportunities into South America to supply here uh, from here as well over the longer term. 18.6 and uh, you know, we think it should begin with a two. When we make a decision to invest in a market for production, we look at how stable the environment is. Is it a, are the rules conducive to doing business? Uh, obviously, it, does it have an attractive cost structure? Um, and Mexico has all of those things and that's why we've been investing here and continue to invest here. In order to successfully use a production base like this to export to other markets, we obviously need to have an, a, you know, the right trade arrangements in place between those countries in terms of the ability to have free trade and to have that work. Um, obviously within the NAFTA agreement, we've created a successful environment uh, in which we can do that successfully between Mexico and the US, for example. Many journalists have written stories that uh, millennials don't want to buy cars. Um, I think what's really happening is millennials don't want to pay for parking and insurance and the total cost of ownership of owning a vehicle in a big city that they, don't, that they may not use so often. So what we need to understand is how does the customer want to, want to consume transportation? How do they want to get from one place to another and how much can they afford that to cost them. And then we need to make sure that we are bringing solutions to those customers. If we sit here as a traditional car company and just say, well, we're just gonna keep building cars and trying to get customers in big urban centers to buy them and own them, that's not gonna be the path to success for all of our customers. So for us, we need to understand from the customer's point of view, how do they wanna get from one place to another? What kind of experience do they want that to be? Do they want to just take the bus or do they actually want to have a, a private transportation experience? What does the ownership model need to be? How do they want to interact with us? And how can we own that customer experience and deliver what they need? But it all begins with really understanding the customer. If you look over the last few decades, automotive, safe, automotive safety has come a huge way and the cars are much, much safer today than they were 20 years ago or 30 years ago. 
accident rates are much lower today than they were 20 or 30 years ago. And so this is a very long-term trend that we've been on and that will continue uh, ahead of us. And again, if, 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 our, if our primary focus is the customer and ensuring the safety of the customer, we need to continue to bring all the technical innovations to market that can continue that long history we have as an industry of making transportation safer and safer. And if you, once you start to think about some of the autonomous driving and assisted driving and so on, a lot of the safety features that are in the vehicle today that give the driver visibility and warnings as to what's going on around them. What we will introduce very soon, a vehicle to vehicle communication so the car knows where the other cars are around that. All of those technologies will continue to make transportation even more safe. If you think about it today, it's, it's a continuum that began with uh, anti-lock brakes. That was the first time that the car intervened between the driver and, and what was actually happening. And that's continued with stability control and now active safety systems with the, all of the airbag systems and restraint systems. And you know, today we have adaptive cruise control where the car will maintain you know, the right distance between the car and front automatically. Um, and so it's really a, a journey along you know, incremental new technologies and integrating those into the car. That's very near uh, that that will happen. Um, and we just see that continuing to evolve. Uh, and, and part of this is to make sure the customer is ready for that and that they're ready to, to rely uh, on those systems. Um, but I view this as, a, as an ongoing journey, not some big change overnight.